receptacles uh, in boxes that are flush or in a wall that if they extend Try that again. Hello everyone, Ryan Jackson here. Hope you're having a great day. Today we're going to talk about section 406.5, which is receptacle mounting. And that sounds like kind of a, an obvious topic, and, and a lot of it is fairly obvious in this section, but there's actually a lot more material in 406.5 than you might originally uh, realize. It goes all the way from subsection A to J, so there's definitely a lot of material, and some of it is new to the 2020 NEC, and that's the version that we're going to be talking about today, so I wanted to do a quick video and review it. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So 406.5 receptacle mounting. Uh, the first sentence that you read is, again, kind of an obvious one, but, you know, we have to have rules in the NEC, even for things that are kind of obvious. So, receptacles have to be installed in an identified box or an enclosure. So, we can't just, you know, <laughs> wire up an outlet and not put it inside of a box or an enclosure or anything. Again, kind of a no-brainer, but if, if that's not in the code, then it's not a requirement. So, we have to have things like that in the NEC. Uh, what we're looking at here is not an identified box per se, but an identified enclosure. Uh, this is kind of a, a cool setup that uh, that I saw at a trade show a couple of years ago. As you can see, it's uh, it's made by wire mold, and it's a uh, it's a box that uh, is waterproof. You put it down in the ground, and uh, and it works on the concept of a diving bell. If you're familiar with those from you know, way back in the day, which I mean, it's it's like a 5,000 year old technology. But the idea with a diving bell is uh, you take, you know, an empty vessel like this and you would smack it down into the water, into the ocean, and you could hang out inside the diving bell and you could be breathing air because the, the water is not gonna go into it. And it works off the same concept. If you can kind of see the design, you can see how that thing would slam down even if this was full of water and the water wouldn't enter into it. So kind of a cool little uh, setup. So receptacles have to be installed in an identified box or enclosure. They have to be in securely fastened enclosures unless otherwise allowed in the code. So obviously we normally have to secure our boxes to something, but there are exceptions. An example of an exception would be uh, mounting a box via a cord pendant. So if we go to 314.23, we see that we've got rules for uh, supporting a box via a cord, and uh, some of those requirements are that it be that it have a, a, a way to reduce the strain on the cord, and that it has to be identified. So, uh, actually, I think it says approved in uh, 314.23. So, in an approved manner, uh, if I was inspecting still and uh, approval was up to me, I would require some sort of a hub like this. Uh, there are boxes that come with hubs, and that's probably what I would require. It says hub or other approved mechanism. Um, is a four square box or a 1900 box with just a cord connector on it, is that okay? Well, if that's an other approved method, then sure. Now, who approves things? Remember, it's the AHJ. UL and Intertech, they list. The inspector approves. So if the inspector approves this, then it's approved. If they approve just a, a cable clamp and nothing else, well then I guess that might be approved as well, although it wouldn't be if I was the inspector. It also says that screws for attaching the receptacle to the box must be machine screws with 32 threads per inch or as indicated in the product's instructions. All right, so this is something that I came up against as an inspector an awful lot. What would happen is the electrician would wire the house, and then the cabinet people would come in afterward and they would take off the cover plate and they would pull out the receptacle, they would put the uh, cabinet on the wall and then they would just screw the receptacle back in with drywall screws, with you know wood screws and that's definitely a violation. Now we can argue whether or not that's a something that you should be really concerned about, you know, is, is this really a dangerous installation? Uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, I think it's debatable. I think with a light switch, it's probably not too big of an issue. With a receptacle that you're inserting and removing, you know, the, the 
attachment plug, I think it could be an issue. So we do need to make sure we're using the proper screws. 32 threads per inch or as indicated in the product's instructions. Um, there could be, uh, like with a, with a PVC box, sometimes you don't have 32 threads per inch. It's, it's actually a, a kind of a coarse threaded screw that would go in there. So we don't want to limit it and say that it must be 32 threads per inch. Uh, it could be as indicated in the product's instructions. 406.5A, boxes that are recessed. Receptacles in recessed boxes must have their mounting yoke or strap seated securely to the surface. All right, so there you go. It's flat up against the surface. Looks like we're in good shape. Now, this box is recessed, as we mentioned. How far back can a box be recessed? Well, if the surface is combustible like wood, the answer is it cannot be recessed. If you go to uh, 314.20, you'll see that the code says that for a combustible surface, that box has to be flush with the surface. If it's a non-combustible surface like tile that we're looking at, then you can recess it up to a quarter of an inch. But you still have to comply with this section. So the ears have to be seated rigidly up against that tile. If the box is flush or if the box extends beyond a finished surface, then the receptacle must have its mounting ears or yoke uh, seated rigidly against the box or against the cover if it's mounted to a cover. And in fact, mounting it to a cover is the next subject in 406.5c. And this one, I think, is actually a, a pretty important requirement. It was added in the code uh, back in 1999, if I'm not mistaken. It was a friend of mine named Don Guineer that, uh, that made this proposal. And, uh, and I think he solved a, a real problem. So receptacles that are mounted to and are supported by their cover must be secured to the cover using at least two screws. All right, so over here on the right, we have one that is properly installed. It doesn't say which two screws you have to use. I mean, personally, it drives me crazy seeing the middle one and the top one. I would do, you know, the two outer ones or maybe just all three. But you do have to have at least two screws. And the issue that we're trying to prevent can be seen over here on the left. If we only have one screw and that screw ever gets loose and, and backs off, that receptacle is just going to be bouncing around inside of that metal box, arcing, sparking, energizing it, and everything else. And you can see the obvious hazard uh, here in that installation. So we do need to have at least two screws if the receptacle is supported by the cover and mounted to the cover. So in a regular installation like the one here, obviously we're only going to have one screw because the receptacle's not mounted to the cover, it's mounted to the box. In these ones, it's mounted to the cover, so I need at least two screws. Although if you keep reading, you do find kind of a, an interesting language here. It says receptacles that are mounted to and supported by their cover can actually be secured by only one screw if the cover is listed and identified for only one screw. Okay, well, there's one of my listing marks right there. So there's a UL, which means it's good for the United States. Up here, I've got a CSA mark, if you can see that. So it's good for Canada as well. There you go. You can go ahead and use just one screw to mount that receptacle. Although if you really think about it, you probably don't quite have the same hazard with this type of cover because the, the receptacle is still going to have its ears up against that octagon box. So if that screw came loose, the screw, pardon me, the cover is rigidly attached to the box and the receptacle doesn't really have anywhere to go. So you can see why this is a lot safer than this installation here on the left. 406.5D, position of faceplates. Receptacles have to be flush with or project from non-metallic faceplates. And they must project from metal faceplates at least 0.015 inches. All right, so you can't have the receptacle recessed back from the cover. Now, on uh, an installation like this, that would be pretty much impossible. But if you could visualize those receptacles being recessed back from the cover, you know, if you had a, a when you were adding or removing the attachment plug, you could see how you could maybe pull it out while it's kind of energized and maybe hit into the box and create a ground fault. So we definitely want that thing to be sticking out from a metal faceplate.
<clears throat> if it's a plastic faceplate, then it just has to be flush with it or stick out from it. 406.5E receptacles in countertops. There's more here than you might initially think. It, it says receptacle assemblies in countertops must be listed for use in countertops. Okay, well, that's easy enough. Let's compare it to the language here in F and then we'll go back to it. Receptacle assemblies that are listed for work surfaces or countertop assemblies are allowed in work surfaces. Okay, so there's two different products that we're talking about here. As of right now, and this is late June of 2021, as of right now, the only product that I'm familiar with that's listed for countertops is this device that we're looking right here. It's manufactured by Hubble, and that is listed for countertops. If you can read it, it says suitable for use in a kitchen and or bathroom countertop. Uh, it is a whole different test between a countertop receptacle and a work surface receptacle. When we're testing for a work surface receptacle, which is like this one, the test is more or less, you take a cup of coffee and you pour it on it and, and you make sure that you don't get a lot of water intrusion. The test for this is you take a gallon of water and throw it on there and make sure that there's no water intrusion. So it's definitely a different test. So if you're installing it on a countertop, it has to be listed for a countertop. And again, as of this filming, uh, this is the only product I know of that can be used. If you're using it in a work surface, then you could use the countertop application because that's tested to a higher standard, or you could use the uh, work surface receptacle here that's not listed for countertops but is for work surfaces. Um, there are manufacturers of products like this. I, I'm not necessarily saying that it's this precise product and this manufacturer, but there are products similar to this where the manufacturer uses some very precise language and it's very confusing confusing, and, and honestly it, it's deceiving when you read it. It would lead you to believe that this is listed for a countertop you really have to read the fine print. This is not listed for a countertop. This is only listed for a work surface. And again, that's as of this recording. Maybe, you know, in the future, they might meet a, a different test. 406.5G, receptacle orientation. Now, before we get into the orientation of the receptacle, uh, it's worth discussing because it gets asked all the time and it gets debated. Uh, the code does not care if the grounding terminal faces up, down, left, right, it, it doesn't matter. There have been proposals to require the grounding terminal to be up. Uh, those have all failed due to a lack of, of technical substantiation. Uh, again, we, we've all heard the arguments, you know, if something drops or the cover comes off or this, that, or the other. Uh, it's just such an unlikely occurrence that the code doesn't get into it. So the code does not care if the grounding terminal faces up, down, left, or right. So I suggest installing these and then you can, you can bother everybody about it because now the grounding terminal is up and it's down and it's to the left. So there you go. 406.5 G1, receptacles in countertops and work surfaces. Receptacles are not allowed to be installed face up in or on countertops or work surfaces unless listed for them. All right, so Obviously, this is not a good idea here in this photograph. We've got a work surface, perhaps a countertop. You could debate what that is. It's an outdoor kitchen. And we've got a receptacle that's installed face up. So it's in a damp location. Uh, it needs a damp location cover, so that's out. It's installed face up, so that's out. Um, interestingly, this was only a requirement for residential until maybe 2011 or perhaps even 2014 when they actually changed it to to include commercial installations as well in fact i had a uh, i i had the extreme displeasure of doing a service call on a commercial kitchen uh back in probably 1995 or so and uh i had to go out on the service call and they had a stainless steel kitchen you know prep table in the in the kitchen with a receptacle just like this one installed face up and I looked underneath the table and it was just a regular outlet box, you know, a metal four square 1900 box. 
and it was dripping you know tomato sauce and green goo out of it it was just horrible so when you see the picture it's pretty clear uh, why we don't want to install receptacles face up unless it's listed specifically for countertops or work surfaces as applicable new to the 2020 code we find this language uh, receptacles are also not allowed to be installed face up under a under a sink <laughs> I mean yeah, it probably goes without saying that this is not a good idea. But again, if we don't have a rule saying it, then it's not a requirement. So sometimes the code does have to say everything. 406.5H, receptacles in seating areas and similar. This is a, a somewhat new requirement. I think they put this in in 2014 or 2017 in seating areas or similar services. Receptacles must not be installed face up unless the receptacle is part of a listed furniture power distribution unit or item two, part of an assembly that's listed as furnishings or number three, listed for countertop applications or installed in a listed floor box. All right, so this is at a hotel lobby uh, in the Miami area and I uh, went to check in that day at the hotel. I looked down and there you go. There's a receptacle face up right in the uh, in the lobby there next to the chair. So I had a cup of coffee and I figured, oh, I better put that right there and take a picture of it because you know, it's obviously not a good idea. Now, I feel 99% confident that that's a violation. I don't wanna throw the big violation sticker on this because hey, maybe this is listed. I don't think it is, but I don't wanna to commit to it and say that is a violation almost certainly is, but maybe it's listed for countertop applications or maybe it's part of a, an assembly listed as a furnishing, so you get the idea. Item I, exposed terminals. Receptacles must be enclosed so energized terminals are not exposed to contact. Yeah, so put them in an enclosure and usually you're gonna meet that criteria, pretty simple. The last item is item J, voltage between adjacent devices. The voltage between adjacent devices in the same enclosure must not exceed 300 volts unless a barrier is installed between them. All right, so first things first. If you only have 12208 or 12240 or a combination of those two, you're not going to get 300 volts, obviously. So unless you have 480 in your building, then don't even read this section. But if you do, then you need to make sure that you don't have two receptacles next to each other or a receptacle next to a switch where the voltage between the two devices would exceed 300. So really where you would see this is if you had a 120 volt receptacle in the same enclosure as a 277 volt light switch, or if you had a, a 480 volt three phase receptacle, you know, and then another receptacle right next to it. So not often that this comes up, uh, but it is something to kind of keep in the back of your mind. It's much more common uh, to see the violation when you have 277 of two different phases installed next to each other for light switches, uh, because that too is a violation. Not of 406, because there's not a receptacle, but it's a violation of 404 in the, uh, in the switch article. With that said, I think we made it through 406.5. As I said, it's, uh, it's quite a lot of material for such a basic section, but uh, there you go. Mounting a receptacle uh, is much more complex than one would think, at least in the code it is. Hope you guys have a great day, and we'll see you next time. Be sure to like, follow, subscribe, and ring the bell.